Hi guys. I'm, I'm a big believer in having a consistent approach to my scales and arpeggios and things like that. I like a fixed pattern that I can apply in various places and that, I think that accelerates my learning, which is, which is why I like to use things like three notes per string scales and that kind of thing. I do find though with arpeggios in particular, they tend to be uh, a set set of rules for every position that you work on up the neck, so it makes them very difficult to learn, or at least learn all the positions. So what I thought I'd do this week is show you something that, a consistent set of rules that you can apply to two octave arpeggios. Now, um, what I'm trying to do here is to, is to introduce some consistency over the shapes, so I'm not trying to play every note that you can reach in a particular position but instead trying to find a pattern that I can apply to every position going up, up the neck, whether it's a major arpeggio or a minor arpeggio, independent of the, of the inversion that we're playing as well. But you'll see what I mean when, when I get into the actual video. Uh, finally, I have put a PDF together again with all of these positions drawn out, so if you can't quite work out my fingering, don't worry too much about it. Just um, have a look at the PDF and, and you should be able to work it out from there. Uh, and what I intend to do this week is I'll just work on the C major and C minor inversions going up the neck. And then in future weeks we can talk about how you'd use arpeggios over chord changes and things like that. But let's, let's start with just figuring out the positions going up the neck to start with. So in all cases the arpeggio has the same basic structure as two notes on the A string, one note on the D, the G and the B strings and then two notes on the E string. So, as I say, I'm going to work up C major. So let's start with a root arpeggio. Um, we're missing out the bottom E string, so we're starting with the C on the 3rd fret, and you should probably know this shape, you may know it already, but it's based around that kind of A bar chord shape. So all we're doing is playing root, 3rd, 5th, 3rd, 5th, and then reaching out for the root. So there's a big stretch at the end there. So that's the first shape. And then the next one, uh, we slide up to the 7th fret. So you can see this is based around that sort of bar E chord on the 8th fret. Uh, we're starting on the 3rd, which is just here. So this 3rd finger is rolling here. slide before, two notes on the uh, A string, one note, one note, one note, two notes. And then we move up to the next position, so this is the based on the fifth of the, of the scale, so we start, start on the G and then we stretch out to the, to the C. And again, two notes on the A string. And you can see this is based around that kind of bar C chord up on the 12th fret. And then we're back to the 15th fret in the original shape. Okay, so that was the major shapes. Let's move on to the minor shapes. Okay, starting with the root inversion again, we're going to start with the C on the 5th fret, and just like before, two notes on the A string, then one note, one note, one note, two notes, and quite a big stretch. It's the same stretch as you did with the, the major arpeggio, but for some reason, to me, it feels a little bit harder. And then moving up, moving up to that third. So we're just there now, and a bit of a stretch to start with, then we're sort of playing around that sort of C minor bar chord, that e, e bar chord up on the 8th fret. So that's the second inversion. Third inversion starts on the G again. And it's just there. So it's a kind of round a C minor shape just here. And I'm doing, I'm doing something a little bit weird with my first finger. You don't have to do this. Uh, what I'm doing is a little kind of a diagonal bar. So my first finger is playing both the G note and the E flat, which allows my third finger to play the C. 
just gives me a bit of an economy of movement. Uh, a lot of people don't like to do that. They just prefer to lift the first finger. A bit like that. And then back up to the 15th fret, we go back to the original shape again. Okay, so that's it. For now, I just wanted to focus on the shapes and, and if all you do is learn the basic patterns and uh, figure out, for example, if you wanted to play an E major arpeggio and you were around the 12th fret, which one would you use? If you can get to that place where you can kind of put your hand somewhere, think of, a, think of an arpeggio or a chord and be able to choose the shape that fits around that position, then you're good to go and move on to the next stage. Okay, well have fun with it and we'll chat next time. Goodbye.